The winningest team in baseball also has the most saves, and people who save the most money are winners. So start earning saves by investing in worthy bonds for only $10 each. These bonds earn a fixed 7% APY, and there's no fees, penalties, or minimum balance required, and they can be redeemed whenever you like. You can even round up everyday purchases to buy additional bonds. Go to worthybonds.com backslash save. That's worthybonds.com backslash save and save and win. This is Let's Talk About It with Janelle King. So we're going to talk about something that, um, or technology, I should say, that I discovered to kind of, kind of, I don't know if I could say, I could say it, I discovered it, or maybe I should just say that it discovered me. <laughs> because as I stepped into this world of digital and just technology, TV and media, um, I, I became more and more fascinated by some of the abilities that we have in technology. So what if I told you that there was a technology that is being utilized today that can make anyone say anything at any time on video in their voice. I'm going to say that again. What if you what if I told you that there was a technology that is being utilized today right as we speak that can it can make anyone say anything at any time on video and a do it in their own voice. I know it sounds crazy, but it is absolutely true. The technology is called deep fake. Deep fake is a technology that refers to a technique for that is utilized for creating artificial videos or images in which a person's face and body is replaced with another person. Um, the the whole entire technology utilizes these deep learning techniques where it kind of just tracks everything to um, develop these images and videos of people saying and doing things that they're not really saying and doing. And I know that sounds really bizarre, but we're going to kind of dive into this a little bit. So the technology ultimately allows for cre the creation of highly realistic but manipulated videos where the person in the video appears to be doing and saying things that they never actually said or did. So in other words... Imagine watching a TV commercial and you see a celebrity on that commercial and the celebrity is promoting the product, is walking around, is talking to you, and it looks like every other commercial you've ever seen before. But then all of a sudden you realize or someone tells you that that commercial that you're watching is fake. The whole thing is fake. The, the person in the video, everything about it is is just is all tech, technology, and it's all generated through uh, this this form of technology. So, I was and what made me fascinated about this is um, there was another form of this that took place in a movie, from what I heard. So allegedly, the story is that there's a movie that's on Netflix called You People, and at the end of the movie, the couple kiss. Well, I overheard someone saying that that never, the kiss never actually happened, that they had them kind of get close to each other, and then they manipulated their face and their the imagery, and it was actually a uh, artificial fake technology person <laughs> who kissed each other. And it was just really fascinating to me because I couldn't tell the difference. And it made me wonder, how many times am I seeing that? Like, how many times am I being told that, you know, I am seeing something that's real that isn't really real. So, you know, so it just really sent me on this this bad fantastic journey of understanding this pro this this new product and it actually led to some concern actually great concern particularly since I'm in the um political space and so I just wanted to make sure that I did a little bit of research and then shared it with you so that we are all 
aware of what's happening here. So first, before I go into it, go into a little bit deeper, let me just explain to you the different types of deep fake. So there's several different forms of deep fake. You can do face swaps, which is when the face of one person is swapped with the face of another person in a video or an image. In other words, I was watching a video of a young woman who was sharing her take on this, and she was doing it as Jennifer Lopez. And I'm telling you, it looked like Jennifer Lopez was talking to you along with her voice, her mannerisms. I mean, you couldn't tell me that it wasn't Jennifer Lopez, but it wasn't. It was a person that had did the face swap and was now um, a pretending to be Jennifer Lopez for the sake of showing us his technology. Then there's obviously the the voice swaps where, you know, where um, the voice of one person is swapped with the voice of another person in in an audio recording. So let's say as I'm talking right now, if we were to utilize the technology, you would hear me. And if I said I wanted to sound like Donald Trump, I could swap with his voice and do this entire podcast in Donald Trump's voice. It's a little scary, right? Then there's the body swap. So body swap is a deep fake where in which the body of one person is swapped with another person's body. This is seen a lot when it comes to the pornography industry. We're seeing people take celebrity faces and place them or a, a, a celebrity faces and place them on bodies that are not their own and swapping out their body for a body of a porn star or someone who's in pornographic films and then people are watching this as if they're watching the celebrity it's crazy scene manipulation is another form of deep fake which a scene from a video is manipulated to change what is happening or what is being said another concern And then there's object removal and addition, which kind of speaks for itself. Um, Expression manipulation, which is a deep fake, which the facial expressions or body language of a person in a video or image is manipulated. And then there's the audio deep fake, where the deep fake in which the audio recording is manipulated to change to whatever whatever is being said or to make it sound like a different person is speaking. So that's another form of it. It's important to note, though, these forms of deep fake are used for a variety of purposes. Um, I am concerned about the malicious intent, which we'll get into, but um, it's been going on for a while now, and apparently a lot of people are utilizing it. Um, it ranges from entertainment to creative expression um, to misinformation and political propaganda, which is some of the things that I'm really concerned about. But the rapid advancement of deep fake technology has been made easier for people to create these high quality deep fakes and that's where it gets really scary because when you start putting these type of resources and tools in the hands of people who are um, who have malicious intent in mind or who wants to become a different person or just are not uh, emotionally mature as I always talk about that's when we can have a lot of concerns Um, so how often is this technology utilized? That's something that was really, really interesting to me. And so as you're on this journey with me, I'm really answering questions that I had for myself and questions that I thought would be um, a question that a lot of people will want to know as I'm talking about this topic. So I'm going to kind of break this up into these little categories. So the first category, or the I'll say the second, because the first was kind of me giving you a breakdown of what it is, is how often is this used? Um, well, the use of deep fake technology has been increasing in recent years. So it's been utilized for a while, but we're seeing it grow more and more. There was a video that was um, put out against Nancy Pelosi. I don't know who did it or who was behind it, which is another issue. But in the video, you see her talking. And what they did was they slowed it down a little bit and added some of this technology in there and even changed some of the things she was saying, I believe. 
Um, and ultimately, she it, it looked like that the image of what they were trying to portray was her of being a drunk woman who was talking about random things. And the video was not an, an actual video. It was a deep fake. And a lot of people took it and ran with it. And, uh, you know, and which is easy to do when you are kind of, you know, you're on your side or when you already have certain perspectives of them so or perspectives of the person so you know it was pretty easy for people to just kind of take it so that was something that I that I, I researched and I found and I found a lot of other deep fakes as well in commercials but apparently it's increasing in over the years and it's pretty difficult to really quantify exactly how often it's being utilized however the technology continues to advance and become more and more accessible, as I was saying, to people who are not as um, technologically savvy. Deepfakes are being used now um, all over the world. And it, there, there is a given potential of harm that is growing. And the reason why is because the, the deepfakes are becoming increasingly more and more high quality. It's just starting to look more and more like it is something that um, is real and that is believable. So one of the things that I know um, parents should be concerned about and should really pay attention to is that a lot of times you'll see deepfake being used to spread like false information and like I said, engage in malicious activities and behaviors, but cyberbullying and online harassment is one. There was a young girl who her face and was placed on um, a, another person's body and it was shared and it was horrifying because it looked as if she was performing an act that was a sexual act and she wasn't and she wasn't there it was a total fake she nearly took her own life because of this so it can be really really detrimental I mean I can't even imagine if I turned on social media and I saw a video of me saying things that I didn't say or looking or making expressions that I don't make or I didn't make and in or even being in places and environments that I have never been that is quite concerning. Another question I had was, who can use this technology? Is it authorized by a certain group of people? Do you have to get licensed? I don't know. I mean, I have, I'm doing research. So deepfake technology can be used by anyone who has the necessary tools and resources. So anyone who understands the platform and knows how to do it, it can be utilized by anybody. And this includes individuals includes companies organizations i mean we like i said we're already seeing it in entertainment world and advertising and now politics which is just horrific but this stuff can really i mean it can be open and out there to everyone so why and while the creation of deep fakes require a certain level of technological skills or technical skills in general access to these resources doesn't and people are learning and with YouTube and all this and Google it's almost impossible not to learn something and become almost proficient at it just from finding instructional videos and things of that nature so the fact that anyone and everyone can use it is interesting and then now I'm realizing that I've learned through my course of my research that there's a lot of um, user-friendly tools that are being put out there and services just to make it easier for non-experts and for people who are not have the technical skills. So it's important to note, though, that the use of deep fake, because this part was important to me, it does have potential harm. It does raise ethical concerns. It is being talked about in Congress, from my understanding. It is being talked about in various different platforms in various different ways. Um, I think it's important to be mindful of this, that there are potential consequences. So that being said, I think it's important, too, to familiarize yourself with ways in which you can protect yourself and ways in which you will know you can tell what deep fakes are and be able to kind of see it. I know it's getting, like I said, it's increasingly changing and getting better and better, but I do think it's important to have the basics on hand. Before we get into how to protect yourself, let's talk about some of the legal ramifications of using deep fake, right? Because 
it's important to know what these are so that when you see what you see or you are experiencing something or God forbid it happens to you, you'll know the different categories that it can fall under when it comes to legal issues. So the use of defects can raise several legal issues um, the le- and legal ramifications, some of which are copyright infringement. So creating a deep fake that uses someone else's copyrighted material, such as a video or image without their permission, can be a violation of copyright law. It's increased. It's, it's, it is it is so important now. And I know I keep saying that. Um, so for those of you to hear me say it's so important a thousand times and it's annoying, I apologize in advance. But I really do find this to be that important that we talk about how um, we how we're just clicking things and agreeing to these terms and conditions of all these platforms and not really looking into how they are utilizing your images, your videos, your products, and so, and and just things that you think are yours. Um, I say this because there was a AI technology, um, an AI image creator that was put out and if you listen to some of or if you read some of the terms and conditions it says that this platform has access to all of your images all of your data anything that you put in there they can take it use it for however they wish and and it's, it's just it, it's all theirs well, that's something you agreed to. So if you were to come across a deep fake and a deep fake looks like you and you talking and you're in a place that you have never visited before, um, you can't really call it copyright infringement if they're utilizing, um, and I'm no attorney, so I'm just saying, but if they're utilizing a image or something that is associated with your uh, social media page that you've already said and consented to them utilizing your images for whatever they want. Take, for instance, the AI stuff. Um, I don't know if you can use copyright infringement as a defense. So we need to make sure we're reading the small print. Defamation is another legal ramification of this. You know, so creating a deep fake that falsely portrays someone in a negative light can be considered defamation and defamatory. So that's definitely something that you can think about. Harassment, creating a deep fake that's intended to harass, intimidate, or threaten someone is also can be illegal. Um, election interference. We keep hearing that all the time, but I think that this is where deep fake is going to show up the most. I'm interested to see what happens and how the political spectrum and space changes, knowing that this is a technology that is out there. But using deep fakes to interfere with the outcome of an election or spread false information about a political candidate is also illegal in many jurisdictions. So that's one way. And then obviously fraud, you know, creating a deep fake that is intended to deceive someone into giving you money or valuable information can also be illegal. This is important particularly when it comes to our seniors because I read that there was a story of a couple who was an older couple and they got a call from their child I'm using quotation marks um, and the it was their child's voice um, it's just I mean it sound just like their child and the child was asking for money and claiming that they were in dire need of their help and they sent them the money so that's one way that could really be concerning. I know now I'll see numbers show up on my on my uh, phone that's calling me for spam, and I seemingly I feel like I recognize the number because I'll see an area code, and I'm like, okay, maybe this is someone a family member. Turns out it's not. So imagine if you did see a number that sound like, that looks like a family member. You answer the phone, and the person on the other line sounds like your family member, and you're having this conversation, and you really think something's wrong, and God forbid you send them the money. So that's that's how this is completely illegal in so many ways um, at so many times, but it can also be done in the way where it's not. So I want to now equip you to recognize deep fake a little bit, just kind of give you some just a little bit of um, a baseline, so to speak, so that you can at least question if you are watching or looking at something that is, that was created with this technology. So here are some steps that you can take to protect yourself against illegal use of deep fake technology. Number one, 
Be aware of deep fakes. Well, you're doing that now because you're listening to this podcast. So now you're learning. If you didn't know about this already, now you know that it is a technology that is readily available and it's happening. Familiarize yourself with what deep fakes are. You know, you can search. There's a lot of YouTube videos of people talking about this and where you can see it for yourself. Um, but I'm going to post some things on my social media. So follow me on IG or uh, which is Instagram for those who don't know <laughs> called J King the podcast. Uh, follow me. I'm going to drop a couple of as we're leading up to this posting. I'm going to drop a couple of deep fake examples so you can really see how how this can be um, utilized, how it's being utilized and how it can be really dangerous. Familiarize, uh, uh, make sure you familiarize yourself and, and with the sources that you are, that you consider to be trusted. So verify the source is another way that you can protect yourself. So if you come across a video or image that seems a little suspicious, just check into the source, you know, just do a little bit more research before you share it, like it, repost it. (laughs) Um, This I'm laughing because, oh, my God, vulnerable, transparent moment. I I was I had a Fox hit Fox News hit okay so it was a national news hit um, one morning and the night before I was scrolling through social media and I saw something that someone had posted and this person I trusted and I said well if they're posting it I'm sure that they did the research well I was completely wrong and thank god it was something simple but I ended up saying it on the show and it was corrected and I was mortified but. That was a great learning experience because now we have to go even deeper because I'm realizing that people that I thought were doing research are not doing their research. So even when it comes to looking for trusted sources, let's make sure that we have maybe one or two, about one to two levels deeper just to make sure. Another way you can protect yourself is to look for signs of manipulation. So there are often these subtle signs that you can see in the video or the image to show that it has been manipulated, altered of some sort, utilizing this technology. So look for just unnatural movements, um, blinking patterns. I mean, we typically don't blink in a pattern. So if it looks like this person's blinking at a certain, like every couple of seconds, then that's something to think about, or maybe not every couple of seconds, but just kind of on cue. And any other abnormalities, I want to make sure I add here that just as much as the protections are being sought out and being put in place, the people who are building this technology are advancing quickly as well. So by the time you hear this, there may be a technology that's already been advanced that can um, can, can make these manipulations or these things that you're looking for look like they're real. So, I mean, while we're talking about it, keep in mind that I believe you have to utilize all of these steps at once, not just one or two, because it could be that the technology is advanced. So another way to, um, detect deep fake is to use technology on it. So there are some tools. There's a growing number of tools that are being created. Um, these tools and these different technology sources that can help us to detect deep fakes. And I am looking forward to that. I'm hoping that that's something that we can download on our phones or download on our computer that will kind of notify us. What I don't want is I don't want meta I don't want any of our social media platforms turning into information police again and trying to tell me what's real and what's not. Let me determine it utilizing my own resources. I don't want to see any information police running around, tagging images, putting shadows on images and doing all kinds of stuff because they're trying to be your parent. That I don't want. But... There are some technology um, technologies that are coming out that should be able to detect deep fake. As I discover them, I will make sure I share them on my social media platforms. Also, the number one, I think, is being skeptical. Always be skeptical. You know, I was listening to, um, I think it was Jordan Peter- Peterson, and he said something that was kind of cool. He was like, being a disagreeable person is a good thing. You know, you need at least one in the room. And 
I tend to be that person, and I don't I don't mean to, but I am very skeptical of a lot of things because I just I don't trust a lot because I know that human nature, we are we are just flawed beings, and so. I oftentimes think that, you know, everything is skeptical. <laughs> I see everything as concerning, and I feel like the more politics happen and more things change, it's just becoming increasingly more and more skeptical. I'm, I'm just more nervous about things. So when it comes to videos and images that, you know, are shown, showing you something that seems to be unbelievable, prime example, I sent my husband this video that was really bizarre. <laughs> I'm laughing because I found this video on YouTube and it was a man who was sitting on the ground and they said that he had been cursed and they turned him into like a half a cow so he had like cow legs and a whole tail and everything it was making cow noises and it was so funny because I I looked and I was like oh my god this is so weird I knew it was fake. I mean, at least I thought it was. I don't know. I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, too. I said to my husband, the first thing he responded back was fake. <laughs> like, I mean, there was no... <laughs> Kelvin thinks everything's fake. <laughs> so <laughs> he doesn't trust technology at all. But, um, but, <laughs> but I thought that was funny. And it's just true. So if you see something and you're like, this is pretty unbelievable. I don't know. It's okay to be skeptical. You know, it's always a good idea to approach it with a healthy dose of skepticism. Here's another example. Support efforts to regulate the use of deep fake. In other words, like I know I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some conversations happening in Congress. And I, I just believe that we do need to crack down on this to make sure that there's some things in place. I'm not saying control people, but definitely make sure there are some things in place. Um, if anything, just make sure that we are protected that if this was to happen, that it's not a hassle trying to figure it out and trying to get it back together and get our lives back together in case this does happen. Let's just try to make it an easier process. Um, and then lastly, report them. So when you're social media, I am really good at this. <laughs> if I see something come across my social media that is either way too much, like it's just not something I want to see, it's anti my beliefs, things like that, I will definitely either say I'm not interested, but if it's something that I know is fake or something that is sexually exploitive or it's just, it's just really bad, um... I, I absolutely report these people. I make sure I report it because um, that's us just doing our part, playing our role in this in this process. So to wrap it up, I want to close with this. Um, you know, let, let's just make sure that we're not believing everything that we see. You know, we have to make sure that when we do say things or we do things when we see things when we read articles that we are approaching it with some concern um because we're living in a society now where everyone is a journalist and everyone is an expert and we're also living in a society where things are being reduced down to 30 second clips or one minute speeches and People are thinking that they're getting the full story, but it's virtually impossible to get the full story when it's that, um, I guess you could say, when it when it's just that quick and when it's that, that s such small bit of information. So definitely do that. I also want to say that, you know, I, I really believe that when I look at this type of technology, it reinforces my perspective on why I believe that we've we, we, we've got to make sure we focus in on being rooted in something and being rooted in our principles because principle and morality is the only compass that I believe is available during these times of confusion it's the only thing it's just like that gut check right that says something's off here or I don't know if I agree with that or I think something is up Let's make sure we have a long memory over a short memory. There's times when you we'll see things and there are things that were said just a few years ago. I mean, I can't believe that COVID and the whole pandemic was at its prime three years ago. It felt like it was literally yesterday. Um, and then lastly, I want people to focus more so on their personal experiences. 
I believe that history it obviously is an account of, of the past and it's, it's to be respected and to definitely um, cherish and we utilize utilize it because, you know, we all know the saying, if you don't understand it, if you don't research it, if you if it's lost on you, history will repeat itself. And that's always a concern. But we're making history ourselves. We're making history, too. And I really want people to be more... Um, aware of your personal experiences. I talk a lot about this when it comes to our race relations in America is that pay attention to what your personal experience is. How often do you experience the things that society is telling you is so prevalent? Uh, that's some, that, that's important. You know, we're collecting data as individuals, and I think that is extremely, extremely important. So as I stated before, do not believe everything that you hear, read, and now see. Pay attention to what is happening out there. And if you see an image that looks a little fuzzy around the edge and the background looks a little weird, even if it's just a small change, pay attention to it. So we just talked about deep fake. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, follow me on social media. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About It with Janelle King. Remember to like, share, and follow this podcast so you'll be notified when new episodes have been uploaded. And if you heard something that you like, please give it five stars. And guess what? I need your feedback. Or if you just have a topic that you want to hear or some ideas and ways that I can help to make this podcast more enjoyable for you, please shoot me an email. It goes directly to me at I am period Janelle King at gmail.com. That's I am dot Janelle King at gmail.com. And like I always say, remember, Disagreement is democracy. Thank you for listening. Listen each week at thepodcastpark.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Listen and subscribe. The winningest team in baseball also has the most saves, and people who save the most money are winners. So start earning saves by investing in worthy bonds for only $10 each. These bonds earn a fixed 7% APY, and there's no fees, penalties, or minimum balance required, and they can be redeemed whenever you like. You can even round up everyday purchases to buy additional bonds. Go to worthybonds.com backslash save. That's worthybonds.com backslash save, and save and win. Spring is here and baseball is back. You can't forget the Derby. I love the hats. Do you have yours yet? My hat? I treated myself to a whole outfit. If you want to be able to treat yourself, then you should check out the Nest Savings Account at LGE Community Credit Union, where they want you to reach your savings goals faster. Take it from a pair of 680 The Fan wives. Head to lgeccu.org to find out what makes their team number one in Georgia. Hi, I'm Mark Beckham with Atlanta Ramjack. We specialize in only foundation repair. What is foundation repair? Foundations sink or settle. These issues need to be addressed. It only becomes more costly the longer you put it off. What is the biggest cause of foundation problem? Either poor construction, inferior site preparation, or weather. Drought causes cracks in your foundations. If you see any signs of foundation issues, please contact us at atlantaramjack.com. 